Hey there, my name's Emma, and I'm here to preview the 240 study guide that will help you get in the classroom. If you're ready to see the real thing, click this link right here right now, or check the description for a link for a practice test. This video will prepare you for the Texas Science 7 through 12 exam. Today, we're gonna cover three things. What content will be covered on the test and how to study for it, the most likely concepts or themes that you'll see on your exam, and we're gonna look at a few practice questions. So let's fire up those Bunsen burners and get into it. Most of the domains account for between six to 9% of the exam. Domains two and three are the largest, with physics and chemistry each making up 20% of the exam. Each domain covers one or more of the educator standards for this field. Inside each domain, you'll find multiple competencies. Today, we'll touch on six of the 10 domains. Normally, we'd wanna go through every domain, but since we're tight on time, we'll take you through the six most important to know. Then, at the end, you'll get a chance to answer some practice questions, so make sure to pay close attention. Let's start experimenting with domain one, scientific inquiry and processes. This domain is about scientific history and concepts, as well as ensuring the safety of all students and the correct use and care of organisms, natural resources, materials, equipment, and technologies. Three competencies are covered here. Let's talk about experimental investigations. Scientists carry out experimental investigations in controlled conditions, such as in laboratories. These experiments have variables or factors affecting the outcome. Take a look at this experiment, which studied the effect of light on plant growth. There are three types of variables. Independent variables are those that the scientist manipulates. There should be only one independent variable in each experimental trial. Here, it's light. Dependent variables are those that depend on the condition or value of the independent variable. Here, this is plant height. Controls are those that remain the same across experimental trials. Here, this would be soil, water, and fresh air. So let's recap. Independent variables are manipulated. Dependent variables are measured to see any effect on it from the independent variable, and controls remain the same. Great work. Now we've got some momentum. Let's get physical in domain two, physics. This includes the description and laws of motion, gravitational and electromagnetic forces, the conservation of energy and momentum, and more. This domain covers a whopping seven competencies. Wow. Let's start by talking about energy. Energy is the ability to create heat or do work, which means apply a force that moves something through a distance. In the metric system, the unit for energy is the joule. In US customary units, the unit for energy is the foot pound. There are two broad classifications of energy, kinetic and potential. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Anything that's moving has kinetic energy. The amount is proportional to the object's speed and mass. More massive and faster objects have more kinetic energy than less massive and slower objects. Potential energy is stored energy. Potential energy is associated with the position or distance between objects. Energy can be stored in multiple ways. Chemical energy is stored in chemical bonds. Gravitational potential energy is the energy an object has because of its height, or the ability for gravity to pull it down. Elastic potential energy is the energy stored due to elasticity. Here's another helpful hint. A common misconception is that mechanical energy is a third classification of energy. Instead, in a mechanical system, the sum of an object's potential and kinetic energy is often called mechanical energy. All this talk of energy makes me feel kind of like an action hero. Let's switch to our next domain, which is also known as everyone's favorite part of a rom-com, chemistry. See what I did there? This ranges from the characteristics of matter to the reactions of acids and bases. If you thought the last domain was large, get this. This domain covers eight competencies. One of those is stoichiometry. Stoichiometry uses a balanced chemical equation to determine the amount of reacting chemicals needed to create a certain amount of the product chemical, or how much product can be created from a set amount of reactant. Here's an example. How many kilograms of water are created from the combustion of 24 grams of butane at standard temperature and pressure? First, write the balanced combustion reaction for butane. 2C4H10 plus 13O2 yields 10H2O plus 8CO2. We have 24 grams of butane and we want the weight of water in kilograms. Start by converting grams of butane to moles of butane by multiplying by one over the molar mass of butane. Then convert to moles of water by multiplying by the molar ratio given in the balanced equation. 
For every two moles of butane, 10 moles of water will be produced. Convert the moles of water to grams of water by multiplying by the molar mass. Lastly, convert grams of water to kilograms by dividing by 1,000. So we can produce 0.037 kilograms of water with 24 grams of butane. And there you have it. We've made it through the first half of our work in the lab today. Cell structure and processes comes next. Now there are only four competencies here, which dive into biomolecules and cells. One foundational skill here is Punnett squares. The Punnett square is a type of probability organizer to show you each possible combination from the alleles from two parents. To complete a Punnett square for a single trait, draw four boxes in a two by two arrangement. Write one parent's genes above the squares, putting one allele above each column. Then write the second parent's genes to the left of the squares, putting one allele to the left of each row. In the case of pea plants, purple flowers are a dominant trait and white flowers are a recessive trait. The male plant has a heterozygous genotype, capital B, lowercase b, and has a purple flower. The female plant has a homozygous recessive genotype, lowercase b, lowercase b, and a white flower. Next, fill in the Punnett square by carrying the top parent's genes into each box directly below it. Then, carry the genes from the parent on the left into each box on the right. Finally, analyze the genotypes and phenotypes of your results. Because there are four boxes, each box represents a 25% chance of getting an offspring with that genotype. Now, we can see there is a 50% chance an offspring from these two parents will have white flowers, homozygous recessive, and a 50% chance it will have purple flowers, heterozygous. Wow, that's four domains down. Now, it's time to switch things up a little bit. We're gonna fast forward through a few domains and end with domains nine and 10. Now, domains five through eight are important too. If you'd like a deeper dive into these and all the science seven through 12 domains, make sure to subscribe to your 240 study guide. Wow, we are nearing the end of our video now and we've reached domain nine, components and properties of the solar system and the universe. There are four competencies here, all orbiting topics like astronomy and our solar system. Let's start with the moon. The moon's orbit causes the lunar phases to appear to us. There are four main phases, each about a week apart. New moon, first quarter, full moon, and third quarter. Memorize the main phases of the lunar cycle with these key points on the circle. A full moon occurs when the moon is behind the Earth. A new moon occurs when the moon is in front of the Earth. The quarters will occur halfway between a new moon and a full moon. Four transitionary phases occur when the moon is waxing, or growing, or waning, shrinking. Some people remember this with wax on, wane off. Also, don't forget that the entire cycle takes just over 28 days to complete. Now, test creators will often test on the moon phases. It's a good idea to get to the point where you can sketch the cycle from memory on your scratch paper so you can have it when answering a question. For now though, let's move on to our final domain, domain 10, science learning, instruction, and assessment. There are only two competencies here, and they deal with understanding, monitoring, and assessing scientific learning. Inquiry-based learning centers around developing and answering questions or solving problems from the real world. This could mean developing investigations, performing experiments, or seeking answers with teacher-guided conversations and activities. So why is this important in science? Well, science involves discovery and investigation. Students must do, not just read or listen. Students learn in three key phases, assimilation, accommodation, and organization. Assimilation means individuals take in information through their senses. Accommodation is that aha moment as students figure out why their experiences make sense. Organization means storing this new information and relating it to what students already know and understand about the world. And that's it for the domains, success! Now let's rewind a little bit with practice questions. I'm gonna go over six questions that are similar to those you might see on the test. Let's do it. Let's start with domain one, scientific inquiry and processes. What is the most important use of a control group in an experimental investigation? Control groups allow scientists to compare the experimental results with a baseline expectation. So the answer must be A. Great start. Now let's move on to domain two, physics. Which of the following is an example of thermal energy? Only two of these answers are examples of energy at all, and only one is thermal. Can you tell which one it is? The correct answer is D, 
thermal energy is stored in the vibrations of atoms and molecules in matter. Next up, domain three, chemistry. Solid iron three oxide can be produced from the following synthesis reaction. Four moles of solid iron plus three moles of oxygen gas yields two moles of iron three oxide. If one gram of iron three oxide was produced from solid iron and excess oxygen gas, how much solid iron was consumed in the reaction? This is a tricky one. Set up dimensional analysis for this problem to find the weight of iron in grams needed to produce one gram of iron three oxide. First, convert grams of iron three oxide to moles using the molar weight. Then convert to moles of solid iron using the molar ratio in the equation. Lastly, convert moles of iron to grams of iron using its molar weight. Following these steps, your answer should be B. Okay, we're halfway there, keep it up. Let's try domain four, cell structure and processes. Black colored fur is dominant over white colored fur in rabbits. A black colored rabbit with a heterozygous genotype, represented here by capital B lowercase b, is mated with a purebred white colored rabbit that has a homozygous recessive genotype. What percentage of their offspring will have black fur? You can feel free to draw a Punnett square to visualize this one. We can see that half of the offspring will have a heterozygous genotype, which means that they'll have black fur. Therefore, the correct answer is C. Let's jump down into domain nine, components and properties of the solar system and the universe. Which of the following best describes the conditions of a full moon? A full moon occurs when the full face of the moon is illuminated by the sun and visible from the earth. This occurs only when the earth is between the moon and the sun. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Last one, domain 10, science, learning, instruction, and assessment. Which of the following is a main benefit of using inquiry-based learning in the classroom? Let's think back to our definition of inquiry-based learning. With that in mind, the correct answer must be A. Okay, that's a wrap. You've officially completed our overview of the Texas Science 7 through 12 exam. Congratulations on finishing the video. If you found it helpful, give it a like. But there's still plenty more to learn. Did you know that our study guide has hundreds of practice questions? If you really wanna make sure you're prepared for the Texas Science 7 through 12 exam, take the next step and subscribe to the 240 study guide. It has hours of videos so you can watch or listen while doing chores. It's test aligned so you know precisely what you need to study. And it has hundreds of practice questions so you can be sure you're ready. And best of all, it has the money back guarantee. So click the link below right now to get started.